Hello everyone. I'm here to tell you about a new end game event called the Abattoir of Zir and the return of a few malignant powers. My name's Ruben. I go by Bloodshed in the community. Some of you might already know me. I'm here today with Alex Yang, a systems game designer, and Adam Jackson for all of Diablo 4. The Abattoir of Zir is an end game pinnacle dungeon event built into Diablo 4. They're meant to be really challenging for the player. The way it works is it's a complete race against the clock. You jump in, kill as many demons as you can, fill up that progress bar. Once complete, a boss will spawn. Kill the boss, do this all before the timer runs out. You will not be able to enter until you complete all seven tiers of your season journey event. But once this task is finished, go ahead and head over to the Occultist. A new recipe will be available for a Blood Forge sigil. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and craft one, use it, consume it. Once consumed, a portal will open up in Ked Bardu. It's a big blood portal. You'll be fine, just, just go in there. Don't worry about it. By completing the Abattoir of Zir dungeon, you will now earn a brand new Tears of Blood glyph. This incredibly strong item boosts rare nodes within its range, but different to Nightmare Dungeons, it has a cap 10 times bigger than normal sigils. So I'm curious just how high players can get it to this season. You also get a recipe to craft a Blood Forge sigil, one tier higher than what you just completed at the Occultist. For some questions, I'm accompanied by Alex Yang, a systems designer for Diablo 4. Uh, question time, Alex. What's the highest level I can get a Blood Forged Sigil to? So the Sigil and Dungeon both go up to tier 25, but this covers a much wider difficulty range than you might be used to, from 25 tiers of something like a Nightmare Dungeon. By condensing this large difficulty curve down to only 25 tiers, we want to make sure that each tier feels like a meaningful goal that you can strive for on its own. That's awesome. Uh, when can we expect to play it? The Abattoir of Zero goes live on December 5th, 2023 in patch 1.2.3. As a pinnacle endgame challenge, we want to make sure that you have enough time to prepare your ideal character for it. So this is around two months into the season with one month to go for you to push it to its limits. Afterwards, the thematic event will end, but you will have larger leaderboards to look forward to coming in season three. Awesome, Alex, thank you for your time. I appreciate the information and I'm sure the community does as well. Enough about Zir. Another amazing feature being added to the Season of Blood is the return and rework of some malignant powers that players really seem to enjoy. You can expect to find five different unique rings that harness the power of the Malignant. So to recap, Malignant powers were a boost in the previous season that granted you various abilities. In the season of Blood, you can expect to find five of these powers in unique rings that harness the power of the Malignant starting November 7th. Now, a good amount of those Malignant powers are incredibly strong. The Diablo team are reworking and bringing these powers back, but with a healthy balance in mind for the long term. One of these in particular is a fan favorite, the Sacrilegious. This ring, if you don't remember, will auto cast all your corpse skills, but will have a separate cooldown for each skill cast. Ray Skeleton and Corpse Explosion cast every one to two seconds, where Corpse Tendrils can be cast every eight to 16 seconds. I didn't get a chance to play Necromancer, I know, sadly, um, in the Season of Malignant, so I'm excited, I'm stoked to jump right in. Barbarians, do you remember Focus Raged? Well, it's now called Fuhrer, after spending 100 Fury, within three seconds, your next Hammer of the Ancients, Upheaval, or Death Blow is guaranteed to crit and do more damage. Smash, very good. For Rogues, the Trickery Power will make a return. When you use the Subterfuge skill, leave behind a trap that taunts enemies and explodes demons to pieces. Sorceresses can obtain the power of Talrasha himself, gaining increased damage for each element you deal damage with. And Druids, we got a rename here. Inexorable Force is now called Inexorable Will. So when you cast your ultimate skill, you pull up to 30 enemies toward you and deal damage. It's so great to see these Malignant Powers return. It's just more tools to build with and I'm, I'm all for it. All right, Adam, I hope you're ready to sink your teeth into some of these questions. Yeah, totally, I'm excited to get into it. Let's do it. I gotta ask, will all the Malignant Powers eventually make a return to the game? Yeah, we have no current plans to bring back every single Malignant Power, but we are taking a look at what players love and we're very open to the idea of bringing back fan favorites. Well, I want all of them, so where can I find them? Yeah, so you can start finding these powers when you get into World Tier 3, and if you want to target farm them, then you'll be able to get them off of our Shaan. Target farming is like one of the coolest features in Diablo 4. So I'm, I love that we have the ability to do that. 
will every seasonal theme also make their way back into the game? Yeah, that's a good question. It's likely you're not going to see every single part of a seasonal theme come back into Diablo 4, but we're definitely taking a look at what parts of these themes resonate with players, and we're, we're open to the idea of kind of bringing back the things that people really love to improve the game experience for everyone. All this sounds absolutely phenomenal. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you. Hope you enjoy your time in Sanctuary. I'll see you in Sanctuary. That just about does it for today. Shout out to you guys for watching all the way through. We appreciate it and I'll see you in Sanctuary.